we have gotten some crazy news from OpenAI today, where they have officially launched the O1 model, where it is no longer in preview mode. You may wonder, what has changed since the preview? Well, this is a new model that is faster, more powerful, and it is better at reasoning. This is a model that is going to be outperforming other models in coding, math, and even writing. The O1 now also supports image uploads, where it's going to allow you to apply reasoning to visuals for more detailed and useful responses. If you take a look at the benchmark scores, you're going to be amazed. But before we even get to that, I need to help you understand what they have done. Basically, OpenAI has introduced ChatGPT Pro. This is a $200 monthly plan that's designed for advanced users like researchers and engineers. It's going to provide unlimited access to OpenAI's top tier models, including the O1, which is the model that they just released, the O1 Mini, GPT-4 Omni, and Advanced Voice. They have key features of the Pro plan, which is the O1 Pro mode. This is where it's going to allocate a more computational resource based instance to generate longer, more accurate, as well as highly reliable responses. This is a mode that is going to be particularly used for uh, people in data science, programming, and complex fields like case law, as well as PhD level science. It's going to outperform this new model that they just released, which is the O1, and its preview version on challenging benchmarks. So essentially, this is something that many people would use in enterprise solutions for those different categories I had mentioned. But if you had to take a look at the evaluation metrics, you're going to be able to notice that these two models that they released are greatly elevated in terms of its performance compared to many of the other models that are out there. We can see that this is the best model that's out there in terms of these different benchmark scores. In math, you can see that the O1 achieved a 78%, whereas its previous preview model scored a 50% pass at one accuracy. But if we take a look at the newest model, which is the Pro Mode, it achieved an 86. Now in competition code benchmark, we can see that the O1 and the Pro Mode scored similar in terms of its score. They're basically on par, but we can see that it was able to greatly elevate its score in comparison to the preview. Now in terms of PhD level science questions, the results show incremental improvements in handling advanced scientific queries. And essentially, these two new models that OpenAI release are just basically going to be able to tackle complex problems better and at a higher reliability compared to its predecessors. Now, I'll be honest, these new scores are impressive, but it's not as impressive as you may think. Now, I was looking at the OpenAI O1 system card and I noticed something kind of concerning. I went over to the Sway Bench Verified Test, and if we scroll over and take a look at this table or this graph, you're going to be able to notice that the O1 preview, as well as this new O1 model, was recording a 41 percentage. Now, I want you to take this 41 percentage, and I want you to compare it to Anthropic's Claude 3.5 score on the Sway Bench Verified Test, which is a 49 percentage. Now, if you don't believe me, take a look at the benchmark test yourself. You're going to be able to see that Claude 3.5 Sonnet recorded a 49 percentage in terms of its resolution rate on the Sway benchmark. And for the people who do not know, this is a benchmark that assesses how well a model is in terms of solving real GitHub problems in terms of code. And we can see that this Claude 3.5 Sonnet model is even outperforming this new O1 model. Maybe I'm reading things wrong, but from my perspective, this is Definitely something that is underperforming the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet on the Sway Bench. Also, I want to make sure that they haven't really reported a lot of different benchmark scores for the O1 Pro Mode. But what we had compared was the new model that they released, which is the O1. And it doesn't seem to be so super impressive in terms of code. But obviously, under the competition code benchmark test, it is reporting a high benchmark score. And this is essentially a benchmark that is something that tests how well a model is in terms of solving competitive programming problems. So it is impressive in terms of its score, but I don't know if it is worth the token expenditure, especially with this new O1 model being a little bit more pricier.
Now to showcase more of what this model is capable of doing in terms of the new O1 and the O1 Pro mode, I want you to take a look at a video by Sam Altman who goes over this further in detail. Thanks, Sam. Hi, um, I'm Hyung Won. I'm Jason. And I'm Max. We're all research scientists who worked on building O1. O1 is really distinctive because it's the first model we've trained that thinks before it responds, meaning it gives much better and often more detailed and more correct responses than other models you might have tried. O1 is being rolled out today to all uh, Plus and soon-to-be Pro subscribers on ChatGPT, replacing O1 Preview. O1 model is uh, faster and smarter than the O1 Preview model, which we launched in September. After the launch, many people asked about the multimodal input, so we added that. Uh, so now the O1 model live today is able to reason through both uh, images and text jointly. As Sam mentioned, today we're also going to launch a new tier of ChatGPT called ChatGPT Pro. ChatGPT Pro offers unlimited access to our best models like O1, 4O, and Advanced Voice. ChatGPT Pro also has a special way of using O1 called O1 Pro Mode. With O1 Pro Mode, you can ask the model to use even more compute to think even harder on some of the most difficult problems. O1 will now think much more intelligently. If you ask it a simple question, it'll respond really quickly. And if you ask it a really hard question, it'll think for a really long time. Uh, we ran a pretty detailed suite of human evaluations for this model. And what we found was that it made major mistakes about 34% less often than O1 Preview, while thinking fully about 50% faster. So uh, right here, I, on the left, I have O1. On the right, I have O1 Preview. And I'm just asking it a really simple history question. List the Roman emperors of the second century. Tell me about their dates, what they did. Um, not hard, but you know, GPT-40 actually gets this wrong a reasonable fraction of the time. Um, and so I've asked O1 this. I've asked O1 Preview this. I tested this offline a few times, and I found that O1 on average responded about 60% faster than O1 Preview. Um, this could be a little bit variable, because right now we're in the process of swapping all our GPUs from O1 uh, Pro Preview to O1. So actually, O1 thought for about 14 seconds. O1 Preview still going. To illustrate the multimodal input and reasoning, uh, I created this toy problem uh, with some hand-drawn diagrams and so on. So here it is. It's hard to see. So I already took a photo of this. And so let's look at this photo in a laptop. So once you upload the image into the ChatGPT, you can click on it and um, to see the zoomed in version. So this is a system of a data center in space. We have a sun right here uh, taking in power on this solar panel. <clears throat> and then uh, there's a small data center here. It's exactly what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the problem. I'm going to this prompt, and uh, yeah, this is essentially asking for that. So let me uh, hit go, and the model will think for seconds. OK, so the model finished thinking, only 10 seconds. It's a simple problem. So let's see if uh, how the model did it. So power input. Um, so first of all, this one gigawatt, that was only drawn in the paper. So the model was able to pick that up nicely. And then um, radiative heat transfer only. That's the thing I mentioned. So in space, nothing else. And then some simplifying um, uh, choices. And one critical thing is that I intentionally made this problem underspecified, meaning that um, the critical parameter is a temperature of the cooling panel. Uh, I left it out so that uh, we can test out the model's ability to handle um, ambiguity and so on. So the model was able to recognize that this is actually a uh, unspecified but important parameter. And it actually picked the right um, range of param uh, temperature, which is about the room temperature. And with that, it continues to the analysis and there's a whole bunch of things, and then found out the area, which is 2.42 million square meters. Just to get a sense of how big this is, this is about 2% of the uh, land area of San Francisco. This is huge. I'll skip through the rest of the details, but I think the model did a great job um, making nice, consistent assumptions that um, you know make the required area as little as possible, and so, um, yeah, so this is the demonstration of the multimodal reasoning. And this is a simple problem, but O1 is actually very strong. And on standard benchmarks like MMMU and MathVista, O1 actually has the state-of-the-art performance. Now, Jason will showcase the, the Pro mode. 
Great. So I want to give a short demo of uh, ChatGPT 01 Pro mode. Um, people will find uh, 01 Pro mode the most useful for, say, hard math, science, or programming problems. So here I have a pretty challenging chemistry problem that uh, 01 Preview gets usually incorrect. And so I will uh, let the model start thinking. Um, one thing we've learned with these models is that uh, for these very challenging problems, the model can think for up to a few minutes, I think. For this problem, the model usually thinks anywhere from one minute to up to three minutes. OK, so you can see the model actually was faster this time. Uh, so it finished in 53 seconds. You can click and see some of the thought process that the model went through to get the answer. Uh, you could see it's uh, thinking about uh, different candidates like Neuroligand initially. Um, and then it arrives at the correct answer, which is uh, retinochicin, uh, which is great. But that's about it for today's video on OpenAI's new release. I definitely think that this new model is impressive, but at the same time, uh, the $200 per month uh, subscription to access it is definitely not something that is appealing. Uh, it is something that is going to be providing a lot of benefits for a lot of people in various things like programming, data science, and even law. But it is something that the average person won't be able to utilize, especially with this paywall that they have set up. I'm really interested to see what you guys think about this. I want you to leave a comment actually and describe if you really like what they're working towards. Now, this 12 day of OpenAI releases is gonna be interesting and maybe we might even see a new model, but let's see. I definitely think that they're going to pull something uh, out of the blue and it's going to surprise a lot of people. So really wondering as to see what they drop within these 12 days. But that's about it for today's video, guys. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news as well as following our Twitter. And make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with whatever's happening in the world of AI. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.